Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. We got a great show tonight. Our guest is the voiceover doctor, Bill Holmes. Hi, Bill. Hey, everybody. How you doing? We're doing great. We're going to have a great time talking about how to fix your VO performance issues. And uh, so if you got questions, throw them in the chat room, whether you're in Facebook or on YouTube or, you know, or send up a smoke signal. We'll get it out there. Jeff Holman is out there writing your questions down, and we'll yes, get those is. questions to Bill in just a little bit. Are you ready, Mr. Whittem? Five by five. All right. Mahalo to you, too. All right. Time for voiceover body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Whittem, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super-secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Woodham. <laughs> George the Tech. Is, <laughs> and this is voiceover. Body Shop. Or VO. B S. Well, welcome to another live show for those of you who are smart enough to watch the show live, because you can ask your questions in one of the chat rooms that you might be watching in. And uh, we can get those questions to our guest tonight, who is Bill Holmes. We'll talk to him in a second. But as usual, you know, once or twice a year, Los Angeles needs a rinse. <laughs> I forgot to park my car outside. <laughs> it gets, it's filthy. It, well, yeah, but that's the thing. Don't wash your car when it rains here. But when it doesn't rain, it dust just collects. It's a dusty place. Yeah. But the sun is out now. And that's so back it to is? sunny Southern California. Oh my gosh. The sun is out. Wow. <laughs> Far out, man. Isn't that amazing? All righty. Well, tonight we we're going to be talking about uh, all sorts of fun stuff about fixing your, your, your voiceover performance. And uh, so again, we invite you to ask your questions and we'll get to those in a little while, but right now it's time to introduce our guest, uh, Bill Holmes. Uh, the voiceover doctor for over 35 years, Bill Holmes has been working in film, television, theater, comedy, and advertising. During that time, he's been part of the voiceover world as an actor, director, producer, teacher, manager. When does he sleep? Over the last 35 years, he has solidified himself as one of the top demo producers in the nation and an acting coach of the highest regard. And he's proud of the incredible percentage of his students and demo clients that have gone on to successful careers in the voiceover community. So let's welcome once again to voiceover body shop, Bill Holmes, Bill, welcome to the show. Once again, turn your mic on, turn your mic on. <laughs> oh, Hey, Bill Holmes. There it is. Yeah. 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 I got to push a button. I keep forgetting. I got to yeah. push a button. Yeah, you don't have, hey, you don't have to do having anything. me guys. Great to have you back on the show. It's been a couple of years and, uh, you know, the fact is, is you're right down the street, so you should be able to come here, but you know, that's we're all right. I know. Well, you know, the, the, the COVID, the pandemic, I'm, I, I'm trapped inside the studio here with uh, Bob's big boy in the back and, uh, we're just slinging burgers together for some extra money. 
does that make you hungry? I mean, every time you see that, like, you know, I can really use it. A little bit. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> hey, go, go get a double decker. <laughs> yeah. Or a pastrami burger. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, welcome back to the show. Uh, you know, you're you're a well-known entity here in our business and certainly here in L.A. But how did you know, I always ask this question off the top? Yes. And that is, how did you get into the voiceover business? It's not something that, you know, you know, when I when I was growing up, on, I want to be a voiceover artist or I want you know, how did how did you come about into this career? Well, uh you know, in high school, uh, I was doing plays and everything. And my, my, my drama teacher said, you know, you could do this for a living. And I was like, are you kidding me? Are you nuts? This for a living? <laughs> and then, uh, then I went to a prestigious acting school in Chicago, the Goodman school of drama, uh, back in 1979, 1980. Uh, and they promptly threw my ass out of there. They, they said, you know, why don't you, why don't you not do this? Uh, so, you know, Dan, I like, I like to brag that I've been thrown out of some of the best schools in the country. And, uh, so, um, but I just proceeded to become an actor in Chicago. So I did a lot of stage. I did some musicals. Um, but what I realized when I got married at a young age was the most amount of money was in commercials. So I, I, I heavily pursued cause you, I mean, theater, you can make hundreds of dollars in theater <laughs> telling you oh, okay. a, a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so I decided to, uh, do commercials and I, I got a great agent in Chicago, Amelia Lawrence, uh, at the time. And, uh, there was a, an agent there. Her name was Linda Jack and she ran the voiceover department at Amelia Lawrence. And I was this, this cocky young kid. And I said, I said to her, uh, you know, cause back then they were all, uh, uh, you know, tapes, reel to reel quarter inch tapes. And they, there would be shelves and shelves of tapes all. Over. I said to her, I said, look, I, I, I want to do this voice thing. And she was like, you know, why don't you go get an acting job first? <laughs> I, I hadn't really done any commercials yet. And I said, so if I, if I get an acting job, you'll, you'll, you know, join the union. You'll let me do this. She goes, yeah. So, uh, so Bob, yeah, it took me about six or seven months, but I finally booked a, 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 an industrial film, an industrial film that uh, uh, Catherine Joustin was in. Actually, I, I like bragging about that. I was in a film with Kathy Joustin. And, uh, and so anyway, uh, I, I went immediately back to her and I said, okay, I booked this job. I'm in the unit. And I want to do this. I want to do this. So she said, here, go on this audition. And I remember what it was. It was for Clark Candy Bars. And, uh, I, uh, I, I booked it. I wound up booking it. And then she sent me on a second audition and I wound up booking that. And she's like, all right, get me a demo and let's, let's do this. And that's how I kind of broke into, uh, the voiceover world when it was a very, very different world. Okay. Um, then jump to a few years later, I'm here in Los Angeles and quite honestly, my voiceover career came to a, an abrupt stop. It just stopped 100% because nobody knew me in Los Angeles. And, um, but I was doing a lot of on-camera commercials and stuff. So I didn't really pay attention to it, but then started going off the air. Yep. You lost your mic again there, Bill. Sorry. Yep. Uh, when, when they started going off the air, I thought, well, maybe I should do voiceover again. And so, uh, you know, I tried to get agents and the agents weren't really that interested in me. And, uh, and it wasn't until I, uh, I had, I was with Don Pitts actually back in the day, um, who, and Don, if you kids out there don't know Don Pitts, he's a legendary agent. So I was very lucky to get Don. Uh, and, uh, Don called me up and said, listen, they need a reader over at the voice caster. Uh, the voice caster at the time, it was the, the biggest and the, almost the only voice casting uh, facility in Los Angeles in the country. And, uh, so they, uh, I said, yeah, I'll go over and be a reader. Didn't pay anything. I just was helping Bob Lloyd out. Bob owned the voice caster back then. And, uh, while I was being a reader, uh, you know, Bob, uh, talked to me about, you know, he needed a director and I said, well, you know, I, I live around the corner. I'll come in and direct. And he's like, great start Friday. So I started directing at the voice caster. That's where I started my directing career. And that's where uh, I got known as a voice artist because all the agents finally knew my name. They knew I was <laughs> Bill at the voice caster. 
and I was going to lunch with these people and, and in Christmas parties and stuff. And all the agents that I had been pursuing over the years that I was here, you know, kept saying, how come we've never heard of you? How come you, know, you, you should come and get, send us your demo. I'm like, okay. I, you know, I didn't have the heart to tell them, Oh, I've been, you've been rejecting me for years now, you know? <laughs> so, so, uh, so I sent a demo over and I believe I signed with uh, Sandy Schnarr, who's one of the top agents to this day. And, um, the rest is history. I just started, uh, started, it, it took me about five or six years to get my voiceover career going out here again, but I got it going. And through the voice caster, I started teaching classes. I started directing more and, uh, and then I built the empire that I have right now. So that, yeah. that's, that's the reader's digest condensed version. Yeah. So how did you get into being the voice doctor? Now this is, this is what you do now. And, and yeah. And, and how did that develop? And, well, um, I started teaching uh, with a woman. Her name was Kat Lehman. I don't know if the kids remember her or not. She used to be the voice of the electric light parade at Disneyland and hundreds of commercials. And she was kind of the big, one of the big acting teachers uh, at the time. And because I worked at the voice caster, I would be directing her a lot. And uh, she said, you know, you're a very good director. And uh, would you, do you have any interest in teaching? And at the time, I, I really didn't. And she said, well, you know, you, you can make some extra money doing it. And I had a couple of kids and I'm like, well, I could use some extra money. So, yeah, sure. Let's let's do the teaching thing. So I started teaching and directing. Um, but I did it. I, I, I was teaching for free for a year um, just on my own, because one of the nice things that Bob Lloyd did for us, we could use the facility at, at the voice caster. There was an upstairs uh, facility and we could do what he didn't charge us for it. We could teach privates out of there and stuff like that. So I taught for free for a year. I just, I had some friends come in or if I had, you know, some uh, students through Cat Lehman, I would say, well, why don't you come on in Sunday night and we'll do some stuff. And that's kind of where I developed my own style of teaching and, and where I found my voice. Um, and then again, my lovely wife, uh, who's a very smart person, she, uh, she said, you know, you really should start charging people for this. And I was like, eh, I don't know. I don't know if I could charge people. And, but I did, uh, I started out at about 50 bucks an hour and kind of went up from there and, uh, uh, people seemed to like what I was telling them and people were successful. And, uh, and that's kind of how I got into to that and where the doctor came along. Uh, I'm, I'm curious about that. Yeah. Well, the voiceover doctor, I, I have, I have an uncanny ability to, to kind of, cause even, even famous people come to me and, and they come and they go, Hey, I'm not really booking a lot. What, what am I doing wrong? And I kind of diagnose what the, you know, what maybe their problems are. And then I give them ideas. Well, what, try this and try that. And I, I kind of give them their medicine and so I started calling myself the voiceover doctor because I, I learned that I could, uh, I could, I, I was pretty good at fixing people's problems. Yeah. And, uh, and my whole thing is I really don't want you coming back to me all the time. I'd much <laughs> rather work with you a couple of times and then get you the hell out there. And, and I want you to be making money at this and not giving me all your money. I want you to make the money. So, uh, so, uh, you know, and, and, and it, it's worked out pretty good as, yeah. as, as like a side hustle, you know, in this business, we all need side hustles. And, uh, and, and that was mine. Yeah. So in, in your mind, why don't people book? I'm sure there's a lots of reasons, but are there any consistent things that you've noticed as to, you know, people who are talented, but they're, they're just not booking the work they should. Well, when, when it, uh, I, I'll speak on the advertising front, uh, in commercials. Okay. Commercials are, it's a finicky, it's a finicky business. The uh, commercial world, uh, it, it, it kind of runs on popular culture. What's ever popular in culture, that's who's booking the jobs. Okay. So, you know, 30 years ago, I'm a young, funny guy from Chicago, Illinois, with a lot of improv background. And I, and I was booking everything because, you know, that, that was in, you know, uh, Michael J. Fox was really hot and, uh, you know, people of that ilk were really hot at the time um, and comedians. So so they were always looking for improvisers. And I, I'm pretty good at that. So so I was booking a lot now cut to, you know, 35 years later. You know, I'm, I'm just the old white guy 
you know, from Chicago and not, not as funny because everybody knows my jokes now and I'm not learning new ones. Uh, you know, but the culture has gone more into a, a more, uh, 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 you know, ethnic pattern these days. You have Black Lives Matter. You have the political climate that's out there now. And, and it's, it's a, you know, uh, for, for, uh, uh, black actors and, uh, Indian actors and Latino actors and stuff, advertising is a lot hotter right now. So, so they're the ones who are booking a lot of work. So it's not necessarily that you're doing anything wrong. If you're not booking, I have a lot of students come to me, you know, and they just go, man, you know, I, I killed it at that audition and I didn't book it. it well, the, the other problem that the kids have these days that I didn't have 40 years ago is uh, you're auditioning against probably 15 to 1500 to 2000 people now, because everybody's got a home studio and everybody's auditioning from around the country. And, you know, when I was auditioning, I might've been going up against 200 people, you know, cause I was just competing with people here in Los Angeles, you know? So that has a lot to do with it. So it's not necessarily that anybody's doing anything wrong. I mean, you definitely have to be, I mean, if you want to book uh, commercials, if you want to book video games, if you want to book cartoons, all you have to be is a great actor. That's all. I mean, if you're a great actor, you're going to start booking eventually. Okay. Um, so you, you, what's that phrase, you know, when, uh, when opportunity meets, uh, you know, preparation, you know, you have to be very, very prepared for that opportunity when it comes along so that, so that, you know, when you are kind of perfect for whatever that job is, they also see that you're a great actor and that's when you're going to start booking things. If you're kind of half assing an audition and kind of just putting it out there and not doing your research and not staying up with, with your, your acting chops, it's going to take you longer to book. I mean, you might book things here and there because you're that perfect sound. I mean, I know a lot of, I have a lot of students actually, I won't, I won't mention any names, but uh, over the years that they weren't very good actors, but they were, they were booking all the time just because of their sound, you know? And, and at that point, you know, they're going to direct you into things. Yeah. So, so no, no real one, one thing that says why you're not booking, but it, it's all kind of an individual you know, process of, of figuring it out. Yeah. So you have to like, you have to know the trends. You have to, you have to be paying attention to what's going on out there. Yeah. Watch, watch, yeah. watch a lot of television. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, I do, but of course streaming now, you don't see many commercials, but, uh, yeah. uh, our guest tonight is Bill Holmes, the voiceover doctor. If you've got a question for him, put it in the chat room and we will get to that question in uh, just a little bit. Uh, cause he's got some great things about, how to make sure you do things right. So why don't you, let me ask you this um, because, you know, every coach is different. Uh, everybody has yeah. their own thing. What's your process like? Uh, my process is uh, it, it's, it's probably similar to everybody out there and yet different because my process is a little more individualized. Um, I don't really have a blanket uh, uh, process um, it, it goes along, it's just basic acting things that I'm sure everybody else out there is teaching, you know, you know, who are you, who are you talking to? Where are you when you're talking to them? Um, uh, I talk a lot about being comfortable in the booth. Uh, I talk about a lot to me. It's, you know, I, the words to me are unimportant. So that's where I'm different than other people. Other people, you know, say punch this word and punch that word. I'm not about that uh, in, in, especially in advertising because they want it to be so conversational these days. Um, so with me, it's much more about what it feels like than what it sounds like. Because if you're in the booth and you're comfortable and it feels comfortable, chances are you have a strong read. The other thing with me is there is no right or wrong. You asked me about right and wrong. There is no right way to do it. There's just no right way to do this. There's the way you come into the booth and the way you do it. And if they like that, they're going to hire you. If they don't like that, there's not much you can do to get them to like it. <laughs> okay. Uh, Cause it all starts with the sound at first. If, if they don't like your sound, you know, no, no amount of acting is going to get you the job if they don't like the way you sound, you know? So, so my advice to people all the time and what I try to teach is like, go in, 
be very prepared, make your choices. Uh, the more specific the choice, I think the strong. So with me, there's no right or wrong, but there is weak and strong. You can make a weak choice. You can make a strong choice. The stronger choices are always going to be the, the, the more specific, simple choices. When actors go in and complicate and try to try to come up with so many scenarios, you know, to, to do, it's just, they get in their head and then the acting goes away because as any good acting teacher will tell you, acting is reacting. You're just reacting. If you were on stage, somebody would say something and you would react to it. And in a Broadway play, something different might happen every night and you're going to have a different reaction every night. And that's kind of what you want to approach advertising with. That's certainly what you have to approach video games with these days. Um, I've, I've had the honor of directing some, some of the big titles that I can't even, I can't talk about. Uh, but, uh, I mean, directing video games is a blast. <laughs> it's just a blast. Um, and, and, you know, I mentioned to you guys, we did a, uh, an audio series, uh, a podcast series that's scripted and we have 31 episodes and I took a year and a half just directing that. And that's very much like a video game, very much like an animation job. And, uh, it's fun for, it's fun for me as a director to see the actor, see it and then create it in, in front of me and, and just be there to help them along. But, but you know, it's got to be a strong choice. You have to see many, many details. And this goes back, go back to commercials now. You, you got to make choices about who you're talking to. Where are you when you're talking to them? And does it really have anything to do with the product? 90% of the time, it has nothing to do with the product. You want to substitute something in because really, who gives a shit about the product? Nobody gives a shit about the product. You know, we don't care about this stuff. And we usually don't know anything about it. So to pretend that we know something about it and to pretend that we're using the product makes you kind of a bad actor because they were going to yep. get you pretending, you know? Yep. So, so it's things like that. That's kind of the process that I use. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Bill Holmes, the voiceover doctor. Uh, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. Uh, we'll get to that in a little bit. I'm also going to have you direct me through a script in a little bit. No. I, that's one of, the, one of our favorite things to do is when. Uh, brave, we, brave man. He is. I, <laughs> I'm going to tear you to pieces. Dan. I know. I'm going to tear you to pieces. I have a rhino <laughs> skin. Been doing this a long time. Uh, one of the other things you do, because we, I think you mentioned it earlier, is you do, you do people's demos. Um, yes. Everybody's got to have a demo. Uh, I think when I talk to people and they're like, well, I want to get in the business and they're like, well, you need to have a demo. What is it that, you know, why is a demo so important? Uh, I mean, is it, you know, just, people are sending it to agents. Generally, nobody's going to hire you until you've actually started to make money at something. Correct. What, what, what is the real purpose of, of a demo then? Uh, these days, and again, everything I tell you on the show, it's only my opinion. Okay. And that's uh, why you're here. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have any hard or fast rules. I'm not one of those guys. Um, uh, so there are other people out there that'll tell you something different and it might work for you. So, so listen to them too. But um, in, in my opinion, demos for the most part are, are there to acquire an agent. Agents aren't going to assign you if, if they don't hear some of your work. And these days, uh, you know, unfortunately, there's probably 80% of the work is non-union these days. Uh, it's not like the old days when, uh, when we all made a living at this. Um, and um, so they have the pay-to-play sites and they have, you have, actors have their own websites now that they can put their demos on and promote themselves. So, I mean, 40 years ago when I was a young actor in Chicago, your demo was absolutely necessary but, but in Chicago, I used to get to go to the ad agencies themselves and I would meet the writers and hand them my demo and I would meet the producers and hand them my demo. And they would actually produce things with us in mind and write things with us in mind. And when I came out to LA, it was all about, no, you had to go to your agent's office and you had to audition at your agent's office. So you couldn't get into the ad agencies out here, at least not in the late eighties, early nineties. So, um, so that's where the demo became instrumental in letting an agent know what you're capable of doing or what you've already done. 
I mean, most of the stuff I had on my demos back then was, was real commercials. And I would string them together and go, Hey, I'm working. Let's all go make money together. Um, whereas these days people are just starting out. And when you make a demo these days, one, uh, don't make a demo. If you don't feel you're ready to make a demo. I mean, if you, if you, if, and here's, here's my take on that. Uh, usually I'll tell people, look, if you can get through an audition with one or two takes, maybe three, hey, you're probably ready to make a demo. But if you're working on an audition, five, six, seven, eight takes with a, or you got to call a coach and have him coach you through it. You probably don't want to make a demo yet because your demo these days is going to get you in the door. And then an agent is going to say, okay, uh, you know, great demo. Now uh, here's five scripts, get in the booth and let's see what you do. And if you're not as good as your demo, you're, you're kind of wasting everybody's time and you spend all that money on, on a great demo. I mean, what I tell, I can only speak for myself. What I tell people with my demos is like, look, if you're not as good as your demo, an agent's going to listen to it and they're going to listen to you in the booth. And if you're not as good as a demo, they're going to go, God damn, Bill Holmes makes great demos. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> you might even get an award for that. Yeah, well, really. yeah, that's great. I, I'm not, nah, I, I just want the money. I just want the money. Uh, no, I, no, really, I want people to succeed is what I want. And But if 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 I'm not in the equation, if an agent listens to that demo and then sees the actor in the booth, and they go, hey, man, you're as good as what's on that demo. Let's let's get you signed and let's get making money. Then then I've earned, you know, I'm very expensive. Everybody's very expensive these days. But then I've earned that money because that that's what pe people are paying me for that demo is to get them in that door so that they can sp make money off that demo. And we're, we're very at, at Compost Productions here. We're very proud of the fact that we got about a probably about an. 80 to 90% success rate of people either making enough money off the demo to have paid for the demo or it's gotten them an agent and they're off, you know, with their career. And we're, we're very proud of that over here. We really are. Yeah. Once again, we're talking with Bill Holmes, the voiceover doctor. Now you've been working on a project, uh, dur during this, this long period of inactivity, apparently you were very active. I was very uh, busy. <laughs> a lot of us were, I think Mark Cashman described us as, uh, you know, one legged guys at an ass kicking contest. Uh, we were all pretty busy, <laughs> yeah. uh, but it's called Carcerim. 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 Yeah. Carcerim. Tell us about it. Uh, it is a, uh, audio drama podcast series. And, uh, during the pandemic, uh, we had started uh, producing this before the pandemic, but, uh, it became a real challenge to, you know, it, it's basic. Basically, what we're doing is we're producing a movie, we're producing a film, but you don't get to see it; you just get to listen to it. That's that's the idea behind our series. So we play a trailer. Yeah, sure. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, uh, yeah. This is a it's a fantasy uh, series. Uh, this one that we have, and there's 31 episodes, and here's the trailer. Feast your ears on this. In the abstruse land of Aru, full of regal countrysides and rayless forests. Ha! Miss me! The once halcyon days now gone. Your hand is mine now. What? Get him out of here. The people resolve to lives separated from each other. We all know how dangerous the magic can be. It's best the child comes with us. No! A prophecy. Passed down, followed by believers. You're a prophecy hunter. It has to be part of something bigger. If I let myself think they died for nothing. We'll set forth the path for the one. I had a dream. I was the chosen one. I saw myself saving everyone. <laughs> of course you did. Leading the land of Aru back to its days of yore. Fire! <laughs> Linus, trust me. Mother! Carcer in the series, premiering September 22nd, 2020. Who's that guy?
Wow. Yeah, he's the, <laughs> hey, he's the best looking guy in the city. <laughs> yeah. got, a, got a face for radio there. That's yeah. awesome, man. <laughs> that was cool. That sounded amazing. Yeah. Uh, let me let me just uh, give some credits here. That uh, the narrator there was uh, Dana Powers. She's a fantastic young actress, uh, voice actress who is also a director here at my studio. Uh, Phil Reich, also a director here at studio. Uh, he he played the uh, Godric. She plays Aura. Uh, in that in that uh, trailer, you heard uh, Robbie Riss, Noshir Dalal, Jane Lynch, Neil Flynn, uh, uh, among others, Sharon Muthu. Uh, and I can't remember. And, and we also have Piper Laurie in the first episode. Wow. I've been thrilled about. Um, and uh, it's all original music that you heard. We had it professionally scored by a guy named, a guy named uh, Dave Volpe. And uh, the guy who mastered cool. it was uh, Tim McCune. And uh, we all uh, we all worked together here at the studio. And it's uh, it was just a damn fun thing to put together. I got to tell you, man. Yeah some great stars in there i mean those are those are the big names and the big names the big names yeah i mean these, everybody's starting to realize if you you know you can do a podcast you know as i always say is there you know, money in this podcasting thing? everybody <laughs> <laughs> there, there's an awful lot of podcasts out there so the, the money's coming in slow but it's coming in um uh we we're helping other other uh, producers uh, uh produce some things here at the studio there's one coming out called solar pretty soon uh that we've been working on but uh uh it's it's amazing what i love about uh carcerum and the whole process of producing this thing one it got us through the pandemic we were very busy during the pandemic and it was great to be busy during the pandemic um, uh, it was challenging because we had to record some people at their home studio. I know Townsend Coleman is in the show and, and he did his from his home studio. Uh, gray, gray Delisle Griffin is in the show. She did hers. Uh, we, we, we employed both of her children, <laughs> which yeah. I'm very happy to say, and they were just cute as hell in the cool. show. Uh, but, uh, it, it was quite challenging and, it, uh, but it, what I love about the medium itself is uh it's very much it's like a video game but you don't get to see the action so people get to create what they want to create in their heads and shane uh i produce this with uh, my partner shane salk uh he's the one who brought this to me and uh he's he's very well known in in the podcast series world mm -hmm. uh, a series called we're alive and and whatnot and, um, but he's, he's, he's the genius behind this thing. I'm, yeah. I'm just the guy who put it all together. Yeah. Uh, but he's the guy who created it and we wrote it, you know, it's all original writing and stuff. But, but what I love is, is we're, we're writing this thing and, or we're producing this thing and, and people would be listening to it as we were releasing it. And they would, they would come to us, they go, Oh my gosh. In that, you know, in episode seven, you know, I saw that guy riding his horse up the hill and then he fell off and then he went into the trees and everything you know, like that. And they'll describe something and I'll go, yeah, no, right. I mean, right. And I go, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and I would look at Shane. I was like, is that what you designed? Was a guy going up a hill? Shane's like, no, no, I didn't, I didn't design that, but you know, that's what they see. I don't care what the hell, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, but, but that's what I'm loving about it is, I mean, we, we have so far, we have over 63,000 downloads around the world. And, uh, we're getting great feedback from the fans just saying, you know, I mean, they tell us what they see and we just agree with it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, oh. because it's, it's, uh, it's, it's why the medium exists in my opinion. Absolutely. What was the hardest thing about it? I mean, doing it remotely has its challenges, but what was, what really made it challenging? Would you say? Um, well, because of COVID, um, you know, we, we weren't really able to let the actors be in the booth with each other. Um, so, so, uh, like kind of like a cartoon or video, more video game, you have an individual actor and they're, you know, you describe what's going on or they've read the script and came up with something. And then, and then the challenge for us as, as the people putting it all together, Shane, Shane uh, did an excellent job editing this all together uh, is, is, uh, and especially the sound design too, is, is, uh, you know, putting the pieces together. It's like a huge puzzle that making that it seem all cohesive. Like they're yeah, fully yeah. having a conversation. They're interacting with each other making that illusion of that. Exactly. The only two people that were in the booth together, there were four people that 
uh, was Dana Powers and Phil Reich. In the very beginning, we had them in the booth together because we were trying to figure out what's going to be the best way for us to, you know, we put like yeah. theater microphones on them at first and, oh, yeah. and lobs, mm -hmm. and then we had boom mics and then we had, mm -hmm. and we, we really found out the easiest way was just to have two mics set at two separate levels. So if they got loud, they weren't going to peak and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And, and it was just one at a time. But we, we had them in the booth because there was a lot of fighting, as you heard. You know, there's a, yeah. a lot of horses running and fighting and everything. And um, the only other two people we let be in the booth together, uh, they appear in the very last episode together, uh, among others, is uh, Maurice LaMarche and Rob Paulson. Uh, yes, Pinky and the mm -hmm. Brain. All well, right. when you're going to have a kissing scene, you got to have both well, actors yeah, together. Exactly, exactly. And those guys, I got to tell you, they were, they were passionate. They were I'm passionate. sure they were. <laughs> no, they, right. they, they created these, these I, I don't want to give anything away, but they created these two characters, and they were brilliant. And again, oh, I knew that those guys knew each other so well. I've known them yeah. for a long time. We've been friends. And, and I just said, yeah, you guys, it's kind of like Robin Williams being in there. It's like, just yeah, I looked at my 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 editors and stuff. I said, just record everything and we'll piece it together. We'll put it together <laughs> later. These guys are gonna yeah. come up with brilliant stuff. I mean, we've got uh, animaniacs and turtles. We have every we have every Michelangelo <laughs> from the Teenage <laughs> Mutant Ninja Turtles that has ever played Michelangelo is in in our show. So all righty, we're talking with Bill Holmes here on Voiceover Body Shop. Uh, once again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room. We're going to take a break and we're going to get to your questions right after these important an announcements from our wonderful sponsors. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. Hi, here I am in my normal workspace with a question. What's the biggest challenge you have with voiceover? What's been the puzzle you need to solve? The question you need answered. Well, David H. Lawrence the 17th and the coaching team at VRHeroes.com want to know. They're creating new courses and training, and they want to know what you need most. And it's easy to let them know. Just drop an email to david at voheroes.com. That's david at v-o-h-e-r-o-e-s dot com. And let him know what you'd like to know. Is it tech-oriented? Is it auditioning? Is it about booking more work, finding an agent, podcasting, audiobooks, performance questions? Whatever it is that keeps you up at night, that makes you scratch your head, or what you've always wanted to know about success in VO. Email David and ask. 
The email address again is david at voheroes.com. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Widom. VOBS.TV. And we're back with wow. Bill Holmes. Holmes, him, wow, I'm getting a back Oh, Anyway, we're back with Bill Holmes, the voiceover doc, and we've got lots of questions from you guys, and uh, hopefully we'll have some time to have Bill direct me through a piece of copy. Cool. Yes. George, who do we got questions from? Yes. At the top of the queue, I've got one that was emailed in before the show from Tom J. Dolan asking, what are your suggestions for maintaining consistent voice qu sound quality and quality of recording? So voice sound and quality throughout a recording project of several sessions over several days. So that consistency over time, that what's the trick? So that, I mean, he's talking more from a technical standpoint. No, he's talking about, you know, maintaining character, you know, I mean, I know my voice, voice tends to change is, you know, over, over time of during the day and stuff. How do you voice maintain? sound and quality? I guess and he's quality. talking about yeah. quality of the voice. Yeah. yeah. Quality of the voice. Well, uh, again, I'm, I'm of the school of you, you sound the way you sound. If you don't like the way you sound, get over it. That's how you sound, <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, um, I'm more about, you know, just being who you are and, uh, uh, I mean, if it's a video game and you need to maintain, you know, a four hour session, um, there are, again, I don't do all this stuff, so it's a tough question for me, but there are probably more theater exercises that you can do for voice placement. Um, uh, because there is a lot of yelling and stuff. And if you were trained for the stage, then you know how to project your voice within a theater. It could be the same theoretically it could be the same you know for some of these uh 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 video game characters that you have to do uh i i did a character in a show called fallout 4 a game called fallout 4 but i played a guy with it. his name is edward deegan and and they and basically he's just you know a guy who talks like this and i never really had to get much more than this so it's in my throat and it sounds like shit all the time i mean i basically just chose to do a thing that I didn't have to worry about how I sounded, you know? So the longer I went, the more I just kind of sounded the same. Um, I mean, I wish I had a better answer for you, um, but uh, it, it's a matter of breathing, you know, uh, doing things from the diaphragm. Um, so I would say maybe go take some theater training or improvisational theater training and, and see if that might help you. All righty. Next one we have here from Dave G. He says, uh, why are people upset, for example, lower cost VOs being found on certain platform? Uh, isn't the client's right to pick the talent they like for a price they're okay with? You know, wh why tell someone how much to charge? An interesting question. Well, um, unfortunately, these days, the advent of the pay to play sites is is really bringing down the business. Um, there was a time, you know, 30 years ago, I could book five jobs a year and make a fine living, you know, and that, that allowed me to go do theater and that allowed me to go do comedy and improv and so on and so forth. These days, uh, you know, almost everything is a buyout situation. And, and so the lower pricing is keeping you personally from making a, a better living. And if, if, you know, I, this is a whole other ball of wax, you know, that we're uh, unwinding here, uh, ball of yarn. Uh, but, but again, if, if they're union jobs, you can, you can live off a union job for a, a good long time when these huge companies, which I won't mention, cause I've signed so many NDAs in my lifetime, <laughs> uh, when these huge companies decide to go non-union and pay a $2,000 buyout for a one year usage that that's difficult, you know, to, for an old guy like me to go, yeah, why, why would anybody do that when 30 years ago, I would make at least $25,000 off of that same spot, you know, for a year's usage or more, depending on how many times they've used it. I mean, my daughter used to be the voice of uh, McDonald's happy meals. And for three years, you know, she made a fine living and lived on Lakeshore drive in Chicago. And 
And that was a, a very nice union job that she would go in every couple of weeks and uh, do price points for happy meals, you know, blah, 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 happy meals, you know? And uh, so, um, I mean, again, it's free market system. And if you want to go out there and do that job for less money and you think you can do it really well, you know, that that's fine. But in my opinion, and again, it's only my opinion, uh, the people that are doing it at a much lower cost probably have a lot less experience and, and it's going it, to, it, it's, it's just kind of bringing down the market and it, it's sad for an old, old dog like me to see. That's all. Okay. George? I like the way you put that yeah. actually. I and mean, we've talked about that a lot, but, uh, yeah, it's just, there's, there's standards that have been established that people have lived on and, you know, we need, we need to help maintain those. Well, I mean, I've, I've looked at social media and I, I try not to get involved. I don't argue with people. People do whatever the hell they want to do. But when I see people saying, you know, things like, uh, you know what, you know, if, if there was just some, you know, I can't believe that they're only going to pay this much for this thing. Why can't they pay more? And maybe we could all get together and rally together and put some price together. And you know, well, yeah, that's what the union is. <laughs> that's, that's what, that's what we did in the 1940s and fifties to get it to where it was. And again, uh, where politics is, you know, and, and everything's happening, it's, it's eroding, it's eroding, it's eroding. And, and again, actors have to band together and stand strong and, and I think if they did that, the prices would start going up again. But unfortunately, everybody's got a, you know, got a studio in their basement and they're willing to, you know, a lot of people just like, hey, man, you hear me on the radio? I'm on the radio. You know, <laughs> that's, that's great. But you only made 150 bucks. You could have made 1500 if you were smart. Right. You know, that kind of thing. Absolutely. This one's from uh, Christy Burns. Is your advice and or medicine based on trends or just overall performance? Um, my advice is always performance. Uh, I mean, if you're, if you're not a good actor, it really doesn't matter what the trends are. I mean, the trends will dictate whether you get work or not. You know, the trends will dictate that. But if you're not a good actor, it doesn't matter what the trends are. You're probably not going to work. If you're a really good actor, again, it's like, you know, preparation meets opportunity. Uh, if, if that opportunity comes along and you're really, really good at what you do, then God damn it. You know, you're probably going to get the job and make a thousand bucks or whatever it is. Hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> uh, from Mervin Dogino, how do you achieve conversational? Old man Dogino's kid. Is that who <laughs> we're talking to? Oh my God. Um, how do you achieve conversation? Um, you know, that's a, that's a whole show in itself. <laughs> Uh, um, but uh, again, readers digest condensed version of it is, um, talk to someone, you know, in your head, someone, you know, very well. Okay. Um, usually it's going to be better if it's an equal, if it's your peer rather than your wife or your uh, siblings or your mother, your, a lot of people say to me, well, you know, Bill, I'm talking to my mother cause I can say anything to my mother. And I, I don't believe that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're not going to tell your mom about some of the things you did last night, but you will tell your best friend at work the next day, some of the things you did last night. <laughs> so, so it's usually going to be a little more on that conversational edge right there. Cause you're not explaining, you know, sometimes your mother's, you know, it's like, Oh, mom, are you listening? You know, that kind of thing. Um, same with, same with a wife or a sibling, but, but usually if it's a peer, it's going to be a stronger read. And um, a, a lot of, a lot of actors these days don't what they don't add to it. You know, it's, it's one thing to have somebody in your head and see them and be somewhere specific, but actually have them talk back to you in your head, have the person in your head say something back to you so that you can react to it. Okay. Because then you're actually having a conversation. And again, most of the time you're going to want it to be a positive reaction. You know, you don't, you don't want to explain, you don't want to present, you don't want to, uh, you know, uh, you know, try to talk people into things in advertising. You want to share the information. And if people decide, you know, to do it, that's great. But, but in, and again, only my opinion, but in my opinion, uh, it's not your job to make these commercials work. That's not your job. It's your job to make the conversation believable. 
if, mm. if, if they did the writing and they put the campaign together, then, then that's great. You know, it's probably going to work, but if you got lousy writers and you got a lousy campaign and there's a few of them out there that I've seen myself I've and there's seen some, a few. Yeah. yeah and, <laughs> but there's some really amazing advertising out there too. And usually the good ones are because the writing is there and the idea is there. And then they attach an actor to it that can just make it seem like uh, it's a conversation. And usually the, those are the, the things that are going to get you the job. So, so have someone, it, it can just be a, a little, wherever you see punctuation. Again, a lot of people say, ignore punctuation. I'm not one of those guys. Wherever you see punctuation, have someone react. It could be a dash, a comma, a period, a question mark, whatever. Have somebody just go, oh, yeah. Oh, cool. Nice. I think so, too, in a positive way. And then you react to them with whatever the next line is, and it'll sound a little more conversational that way. Okay. We got time for one more question here because I do want to go through some copy with. No, oh, I'm going to tear you to pieces, Dan. Can't wait. George. Grace Newton asks, Bill, do you have a dream role or project other than a directing Dan right now? <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your nightmare. Um, <laughs> a dream role? Uh, yeah, as an actor, I would love to play Sweeney Todd in a musical on Broadway. That would be because <laughs> now I'm an old guy, you know. You know, all the, all those years that I love Sweeney Todd. I thought, oh, I'm Anthony. I could be Anthony. Oh, I can't wait to be. Well, no, now I'm the old guy. Now I could be Sweeney. Personally, I don't think I could pull that off. So that's why it becomes a dream role. <laughs> um, uh, but um, as far as uh, voiceover goes, uh, I'm more about. I don't look for any particular role. You know, it, here I'll answer it this way. In my career, I've been doing this for about forty years now. And in my career, I've, I've been very proud of myself. And this has always been my goal as an actor. I've always done original material. Um, so um, video games are amazing because they're original material. Um, I, I was privileged enough to be in a couple of episodes of uh, Rick and Morty, which are, <laughs> which is, holy crap, I'm in Rick and Morty, you know. Uh, at the time, though, I had no idea what Rick and Morty was. I, you know, I'm an old guy. I don't watch cartoons, and I'm busy making things. Uh, so it, it was all my little students who are cartoon nerds that when they heard Rick and Morty, they're like, oh, my God, you're in Rick and Morty. I'm like, yeah, was that good? And what I love about, <laughs> what I love about it is it's a very original cartoon, you know, and I got to originate a couple of characters within that cartoon. So so those are the dream roles for me are the ones that I get to do first and nobody else has ever done uh, so that I can walk away and go, yeah, I, I figured that out. You know, when, when, when you're working with a guy uh, like Dan Harmon, okay. Uh, who I was again, very privileged to be directed by Dan Harmon. Oh, wait, Oh, wait, Oh, sorry. I dropped a name there. I got it here. Um, uh, it, it's fun to come up with something that he wrote and to have him look at me and go, oh, yeah, no, you know, I didn't think of that, but I like that. I like that. We'll go with that one. You know, that was that was kind of my dream role right there. All and right. it was a, it was a five minute session. <laughs> well, speaking of five minute sessions, we got we got about eight or nine minutes here. We got just enough time to do one of these scripts I sent you. Which one would you like me to do? Or would Mishka like? Oh, oh, uh, uh, just just pick your favorite. What what do you want to do? I oh, let's do the soy milk one. I got to see if I got it here. Wait a minute, did I pull it up? I think I got it. Uh, oh, wait, wait. Georgie's got is it. That, is that? Uh, there they are. There they yeah, are. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I do have it up. What did you want to do? The soy milk. The soy milk. Yeah, the last okay. one. Okay, it's and short it, and sweet, and we have just enough time for that. Okay, great. And was there some direction attached to this, Dan? None, none whatsoever. It was none just whatsoever. Copy. You okay, can make great. Up direction for it. So, uh, so I'll tell you what. Why don't you see? Uh, let's see what you have chosen to do, and then we'll just kind of pick it apart from there. How's that sound? Okay, cool. All right. This is a soy milk commercial from somewhere. Uh, okay, from yeah. from the planet Soy, I they, believe. That's right. Okay, okay. You've broken up with carbs, banked points, done shakes for lunch, steaks for breakfast, and can't remember ever saying, "I have the dressing on the salad." You deserve a lower carb, lip smacking soy milk, eighth continent soy milk. Come to a better place. All right. That was just a cold read on that. Cold read. Okay. Yeah. 
So you didn't do any preparation before no. uh, this show. No. <laughs> I just grabbed it okay. and boom, okay. there it All was. Right. For, for the kids out there watching the show, I would say you don't want to go into an audition and wing it. No. Okay. Or it'll sound like that. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, so, uh, uh, the first thing you have to figure out, Dan, is, is, you know, why did they write this? Uh, let's figure this is kind of a casual conversational, uh, uh, this is a casual conversation with, with somebody, okay, right. that you know very well. So, who might that person be for you? Oh, say my, my brother. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right. Somebody who would never drink soy milk, but. Well, well, again, do, do we give a shit about soy milk? No. No, but no, we don't care about soy milk. So, so let's see. You've broken up with carbs. You've done all this stuff. And remember saying I'll have a uh, dressing and say, listen, you deserve a lower carb lip smacking soy milk. So let's oversimplify the script itself. Okay. So that we're not talking about soy milk because we don't give a shit about soy milk. Okay. okay? So so basically you're saying you've, you've done a, a whole bunch of stuff and you deserve something a little better. Okay. okay. All right. So would you say that that's kind of an oversimplified way of looking at that script? Yeah. Okay, great. Which is so, fine. Okay, great. So uh, let's not even think of your brother yet. Uh, is there something in, in your, your life or, or somebody's life that they deserve something a little better? You know, you deserve better than that. I, I got something for you. Is there oh. something like that from your real oh, life? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Can, can you share that with us? Oh, probably, probably the missus. Who deserves only the best things now in be, life? Now be careful. Be careful. You're talking about your wife on the internet. Okay. Um, okay. So so what is it in, in real life? This is not a made up thing. This is something for real, correct? Right. So mm -hmm. what is it that that you know she was like, you know what? I we yeah, I need a new dishwasher or something. Is it something like that or no, no, it's just you know the taste of the garbage that she usually eats, which is you know basically gluten free. So soy milk won't help her. But we'll just right. Use that but you know what, Dan? Take. Fuck soy milk. Get soy milk out of your head. This okay. has nothing to do with soy, with soy milk. milk. Okay. okay? In it. real life, what what could your wife use that she deserves better right now? Something really tasty that isn't oh, that, 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 that's that, gluten that, free. That, yeah. Wait, that she's been talking about though. That, that's the stuff. The stuff what? All... Can you name one thing? Uh, yeah. Uh, Gluten-free bread. Bread. Okay. Yeah. You know what? So does she deserve better than that? Or is oh, yes. that what she deserves? That's She deserves much better than that. She deserves better, something better. So what would the thing that is better be than gluten-free bread? Gluten-free bread that actually tastes good. Right. But is there is there something in real life like that? We keep searching for it. Right. But we haven't found it. So right. if, if they're, again, I'm trying to find something from reality here. Okay. So you got, she's, she's eating this shit gluten-free bread right now. Right. Right. What would she rather eat? Oh, I'm sure she'd love to eat a nice loaf of rye bread or something that was actual now, rye bread. Okay. Let, let's talk, let's talk about you now. Okay. Uh, have you had the gluten-free bread? Oh, yes. Okay, what would you rather have? Oh, I'd rather have a you know a, a blueberry muffin to tell you the truth. Blueberry muffin. Okay, yeah. so now now we're talking about see how we've taken a, a very generalized idea, okay, choice, and we've narrowed it down and we've made it more specific and more specific and more specific and more real from gluten free bread to a blueberry muffin, and that's how you feel about it, right? Right. Because again, we we don't want to tell your wife how she should feel about it because then we're advertising something right. and we're trying to talk her into something. But basically, if you're just sharing the information with the wife, okay, it's like, uh, you know what? Uh, you know, you, you, we've done all this stuff and we've done it together and I've been right there with you, honey. But God damn it, if, uh, you know, I really want a blueberry muffin. And she's going, yeah, me too. She agrees with you, but you're not trying to talk her into anything, right? So in a very in a very casual way, just share that information with her and and don't get to any selling point at the end of this thing. Gotcha. Okay. Does that make right. sense? It does. It'll, Dan, it'll feel okay. I always talked about earlier uh, about what it feels like rather than what it sounds like, right? Gotcha. It'll feel like you're doing nothing. Okay. Okay. Let it let it feel that way, and then we'll see how it sounds later. Okay. okay. All right. You've broken up with carbs. 
banked points, done shakes for lunch. You talking Thanks. to your wife? Yes, I'm talking to my wife. Where Where are you two? Uh, we're sitting at our dining room table. Uh, can you get somewhere a little more comfy? Our living room. Okay, great. So I have to no. shout across the living room. No, 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 no. Uh, sit on the couch right next to each other. Okay. Right. Kind of snuggle up. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So you don't need to project it all now, do you? I don't. No, no. Right. You see what you're doing right now? You see what yeah. that feels like? I do. Yeah, just 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 talk. Just all talk. Right. Don't all emphasize right. anything because you're not trying to talk her in anything. You're just sitting there with your glass of wine and you're watching uh, Ted Lasso. And you just, this just popped into your head and it's like, oh, you know, you, you've gotcha. done this and you've done that. Why don't we All fucking right. try this? Okay. All right. All right. You're broken up with carbs, banked points, done shakes for lunch, steaks for breakfast, and can't remember ever saying I'll have the dressing on the salad. You deserve a lower carb lip smacking soy milk, eighth continent soy milk. Come to a better place. Good. Did that feel like you were doing nothing? Or were you still punching things? Still punching a little bit, yeah. Okay. If if you punch anything on this one, Dan, I will not give you a thousand dollars. Okay. You want a thousand dollars? I do want a thousand. Okay. Then don't punch anything All because right. again, you right now what what you're doing is you're you're manipulating the words. The words right. are jumping out at you, and again, the words are unimportant. It's the beats of the of the of the conversation that are most important. And gotcha. the beat here, you've done all this stuff. You've done this, you've done this, and you can't even remember when you did this. Then a new beat, hey, you deserve a newer lip smack and soy milk. Just, okay. just say it and, and let, let the producers worry about the set. Okay. All okay? right. We got time for one and more again, break here. Okay. Nothing and nothing. A, a thousand bucks. Okay. You've broken up with carbs, banked points. No, no, no. Nope. You're, still, still, you're still telling her to do something. Okay. All hey, right. Hey, stupid wife, you've broken up with carbs, right? That's how that's the attitude that's coming across. You're just like, hey, no, hey, look, okay. you've done this and you've done that. Say that, okay. just say that. Just go, you've done this and you've done that. Say you've that. You've done this and you've done that. No, 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 no. Listen, yeah. listen to the music. You're you're still going, you've done this and you've done that. No, no, no. I'm saying you've done this and you've done that. Okay. You've done this and you've done that. Feel that? Yeah. Let the whole thing be there, but don't okay. tell her what to do. And go okay. ahead. You've broken up with carbs, banked points, done shakes for lunch, steaks for breakfast, and can't remember ever saying I'll have the dressing on the salad. You deserve a lower carb lip smacking soy milk. Eighth you know, uh, throw that away too. You deserve pick it up there and just just throw it. You deserve blah bitty blah bitty blah. You deserve yeah. a lower carb lip smacking yeah, but, soy but milk. Don't, but don't project it and okay. go. Yeah. You deserve a lower carb lip smacking soy milk. Eighth continent soy milk. Come to a better place. How did that feel? Much better. Right? It feels more real, right? Yep. Yep. And if it feels real, then chances are it's a stronger read. Does well, that make sense? It does. If well, it feels like you're if it feels like you're doing a lot of stuff, chances are you're selling something. Absolutely. Well, that was a great prescription for how to get that done. Thank you. Right. Nice work. Yeah. Bill, how can people get a hold of you? Uh, they can get a hold of me at uh, voiceoverdoctor.com. Uh, voiceoverdoctor.com is, is for any of your voiceover needs. Uh, if you want to, uh, if you, oh, we have a game show on Friday nights uh, every other week. Uh, and you can go to, uh, uh, crap TV dot online. Crap. TV. Crap TV. Yes. Crap TV <laughs> is our, uh, <laughs> I recommend you also register crap dot TV if you haven't already. Oh <laughs> uh, Yeah. Uh, it's compost reality adjacent programming. We have our, our little network. We do some game shows. If you want to go, if you want to find car serum anywhere, you get podcasts, you can download uh, car serum or you can go to our website, uh, car serum, the series.com. Fabulous. Bill, thanks for being with us tonight. It was great. Thanks for the invitation. I really enjoy, thanks, uh, always enjoy hanging out with you guys. All right. Bill Holmes, the voiceover doctor. All right. We'll be right back right after this. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, VoiceActorWebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, 
Their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Hey, everybody. It's time to talk about Source Connect, made by Source Elements. Now, you guys heard earlier about Bill talking about producing this amazing podcast they do, and remotely, where the actors are all in different places, and talking about the challenge of doing that, how people are kind of working in a vacuum. They don't get to react to each other, et cetera, et cetera. Well, they should have probably been using Source Connect. Because if they're using Source Connect, they can have multiple actors all connected into a studio and actually be able to react to each other. And it would feel more like a, a live performance, like a theater performance, while the actors are safe in locations all over the world. And that's what you can do with a tool like Source Connect. If you want to get set up with it and you can be an actor cast on jobs using Source Connect, which is what producers and engineers love using on their end because it makes their lives a lot easier, you should go get a, a demo. Just sign up at source-elements.com, get that 15-day trial and get familiar with it. Learn how to operate it. Get iLock set up on your system. All the little things that are required and get get cooking so you can get those cool gigs and oftentimes the ones that pay the best. Anyway, we'll be right back to wrap it up right after this. Thanks. This is Ariana Ratner and you're enjoying VoiceOver Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. All right, and we are back and uh, ready to say goodbye on this part. We're going to rack it up for Tech Talk. Don't go anywhere if you're watching live right now. Uh, anyway, um, next week we'll have Tech Talk number 66 for you, which we're about to record, and it'll be fabulous. George has a pile of things that he's been watching all week. <laughs> uh, something about the tribu. Tribu. The tribu. <laughs> yes, the tribooth. Uh, you know, the tribooth. We've talked about it before at tribooth.com. We are offering a $200 off coupon code just through Halloween, and it's going to be the letters capital T all caps, R-I dash B-O-O explanation point. Put in try boo and you'll get $200 off on your order through Halloween. That's October 31st. All righty. And our donors of the week, we have uh, a few of them. Uh, Rob Rader. Patty Gibbons. Phil Sapir. Thomas Pinto. Greg Thomas. Graham Spicer. Shelly Avellino. Brian Page. And your dad. My dad, Mr. George Whittem. <laughs> All right. Thanks for supporting our show. You can, uh, if you can, you can donate, uh, if you go to our website, uh, uh vobs.tv, it will say donate here or donate now, I think is what it says. And we'd love to have you uh, help us out here. Keeps us technically perfect. Uh, also join our mailing list, which you can also do from our website. We need to thank our sponsors as well. Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, voheroes.com, voiceactorwebsites.com and, and JMC demo. Um, oh, <laughs> JMC demos. demo. There you go. All right. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman on chat room duty tonight. Our technical director, the Matt Hatter, uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt Merlino. Thanks for, uh, for doing all the switching tonight and getting it going and definitely Lee Penny for being Lee, P Lee Penny, or maybe he just changed his name. Anyway, we're going to rack it up for tech talks. So stay tuned for that. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard. I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover body shop or VO. See you in just a couple of minutes or next week. <laughs>